Guru. It's a word that I cannot stand when people put that upon me because I don't feel like I'm a guru. I don't feel like I'm an expert, especially when I stand amongst giants like Mark Dawson, Brian Cohen, and of course today's guest, Dave Chesson. And Dave is just absolutely one of the most brilliant minds in self-publishing. He's continually finding ways to really innovate the business and help out in the authors in a huge way. And it's reflected mostly over on his website of the kindlepreneur.com, as well as Publisher Rocket, and also his recent writing software, which we're going to talk about, Atticus. Find out more details about that in today's interview with Dave Chesson, the Kindlepreneur. Oh, okay. We're going to start out this podcast right on fire because they view literally like every day I get up, I got to think like, how can I be able to keep up with Dave Chesson and his work productivity? You just dropped <laughs> some serious 411. Can we share this publicly right now? Yeah. Okay. So you it. told me something about a hashtag generator. Yeah. Um, you know, the beauty of, of being an author and having your own programming team, like at your disposal is I'm constantly like looking at what I do with my own book marketing and saying, wouldn't it be nice if, um, I'll be the first to say it. I suck at social media. It's not my jam. Um, like, and I also tell people too, like that should be, that should be kind of like proof that you don't have to be good at everything on the internet in order to sell books. As a matter of fact, you shouldn't try to. Um, and so I, I, I get like social media is just, it's not my thing. I, I have a Facebook page and it's literally anybody who goes there is like, oh great, I'm gonna go learn from Kindlepreneur on the Facebook page. Uh, they'll show up and it's like, nah, it's like, videos of my daughter playing softball and you know, uh, you know, dad moments or my son dressing up as Darth Vader to go to church and. You know, I'm just so proud, and my wife's looking at me like you did this. <laughs> uh, but that's how I—that's how I run my social media. Um, I got an Instagram again. Yeah. That's the same thing. Uh, Twitter exists, but I think one of the biggest things that's always been my—I don't know—hang up about social media is when there's that moment where, like, I'm writing and I want to talk about, you know, like, oh, I'm having writer's block right now, you know, and hey, this is a great moment to talk to people on that or to connect with people about the writer's block, like. I write it and then I'm like, oh, there's those hashtag things like, crikey, which one? <laughs> uh, and, and I just blank out and I'm like, this is dumb and I quit. Or I just delete the tweet or, or TikTok or whatever it is. And I just go back to just, oh, look, there's my kid, Beep, <laughs> yeah. you know? Uh, oh, look, I, there's me doing a dumb moment and my wife's looking at me, Beep, you know? Um, and it's just because I don't, I, like I'm in the moment and I don't wanna have to go research which hashtag sure. to put in there. And so, I, I sat there and I thought about it. I was like, man, you know, wouldn't it be nice if there was a place that had all the hashtags for authors and I could help find the right group that would help make my tweet, Instagram, Pinterest, or TikTok uh, get out there. And so we started building this just free hashtag generator. And the way it works is that you start by selecting which platform, because let me tell you, the hashtags are different for the platforms. There are certain hashtags that are very popular for Instagram that are not on TikTok. And there are some that are amazing for Twitter but wouldn't do anything for Pinterest. Um, and so what we did was you select which platform you're thinking about, then you sort of select what you're involved in. Like what stage in writing are you in? Is it that you are currently uh, writing? Maybe you finished a book? Uh, maybe it's certain symptoms like, you know, um, character killing off a character or it could be something as crazy as you know as writer's block but the point though is there's a grouping of hashtags that are out there based off of where you're at and what you're trying to do there's also genre specific hashtags and so basically you select on what pertains to this tweet and then it will list off all the most popular legit hashtags that are out there and what's really cool because this is another thing i ran into as a user is when you start selecting them some of the platforms have different rules. Okay. So like, for example, and I might mix this up because again, I'm not yeah. a social media expert. Uh, it's something like, I think Instagram allows a certain number of hashtags, but Twitter has a character count mm -hmm. on the hashtags. So our system figures that out for you and tells you how many you have left. But when you finally select all the ones you want, you just click to copy to your, um, your dashboard or your, 
to your virtual clipboard. What do they call it? The uh, yeah. clipboard. Yep, your virtual clipboard. And then you can paste it right into your Twitter or Instagram or what have you. So again, it was just me being like, man, this sucks and I hate doing this and I <laughs> I don't know which is the right way. Huh, wouldn't it be nice? And so there it is. It's crazy. I see you rolling out a lot of stuff through Kindlepreneur.com. I don't think enough authors know about all of the free resources that you guys offer there. Everything from the HTML book description generator, which, by the way, I don't feel like that right there is not as like it's really refined. It's great. What I see is what I get. I find sometimes I use the HTML stuff in KDP's dashboard and it turns out wonky. What the heck happened there? That's yeah. another discussion for another day. Um, you have that. And one of the ones I really like, and I know I'll be going a lot deeper into this as I'm starting to publish books further out, is the QR code generator. Mm -hmm. What are some tools that you have right now that aren't getting as much exposure as you would like them to? No, I, you know, I think that's... I mean, so just to list them off, um, you know, there's the yeah. Kindle calculator, which is a quick calculator to help somebody uh, translate the Amazon bestseller rank into the number of books sold that day. Um, mm -hmm. And then you talked about the QR code generator. And the, the thing I love about that one is, um, and, and for those who don't know what a QR code is or a QR code generator, is that you can create this really cool, like, I don't know, digital looking box, if you will. And mm -hmm. if somebody sees it, all they have to do is open up their smartphone, turn on the camera, and the camera will sense that and know it's a QR code. And then it will take you straight to whatever page you want it to go. So in this case, you go to the generator, you put in the link, you generate your QR code, and now it's like a super fast way to get people to get somewhere. Uh, it's really cool for books because if you yeah. want to send somebody to, say, the audiobook version or a different book, boop, there it is. Or even better is put the QR code to your latest book on the back of your, you know, author business card, right? Then it's super quick to send people instead of making them type in the URL. Um, but the other thing that I added to it, and again, this is, I think it's like the common phrase about when I do the software is, I'm always like, wouldn't it be nice if, uh, is that <laughs> yeah. I once put in the wrong QR code into a book. And I didn't find out until later in the reviews. And well, because I mean, they all look digital. You don't know what it is. So one of the yeah. things that I told my guys is like, I want to be able to put a little picture in the middle. Okay. And that way, that little picture is a quick way for me to know which QR code it is. So oh, in sorry. this case, you can put your book cover right in the middle of the QR code. So the, the digital is around it, kind of looks cool. Um, but then I know that that QR code sends to this book. Or I put like, for example, if it's to the... I even make them for my own website. Like I'll give a presentation and while I'm giving the presentation, I'm like, hey guys, if you want to download this PDF, just use this QR code and the big giant slide is the QR code. Well, in the middle, yeah. I'll put the PDF in the middle. So I always know that's the right one because you don't want to give a presentation and people are like, are like, wait a second, what is this? Like, Whoops, my bad. <laughs> it's even worse when it's a printed book. So anyways, created it with that ability <laughs> to put the cover right in the middle so people know. Is it's a tremendous tool. Okay, I know you've got other tools on your your site, um, but we could probably be here for a long time, folks. Make sure you go check out Kindlepreneur.com. Honestly, like between your case studies, your guest blog posts, like there is so much information. You guys put a lot of work into that. Now, speaking of, Publisher Rocket has seen its growth, like exponentially shoot up since you and I last spoke. I think we spoke, what, 2017, 2018? It was yeah. KDP Rocket back then. So now <laughs> here it is. It's Publisher Rocket. Um, you recently rolled out some updates. So share a little bit about those updates. And I really want to kind of hang our hat on the most recent update that you rolled out with Audible. Yeah. Well, you know, my biggest thing is I'm always trying to push the fold. Um, I'm always trying to learn more about the program and, and, and truth be told is, is that Amazon is just a giant center of data. Uh, yeah. there is so much one can learn and, and, uh, publishing companies have been using that data for a very long time. And so I'm really, for me, every time I look at the program, I, I actually have a rule with my programmers and it's called, it's what, what I call the ABBA rule, uh, always be adapting, which means, and I want to strive to get them to always look for another way we can do something better. Um, because the moment that you get into, especially with software where you're just like, oh, you know, it's good enough. We're just going to sit here, you know, and blah, blah, blah. 
like yeah. you've killed the creativity. Um, and so for them, that's important. But also as an author, I'm always like, man, I really wish we could do this. And, you know, wouldn't it be yeah. nice? Right. That's the theme. Um, and so one of the things that we've been looking at is and a lot of people don't know this, but over the past year, we've really turned to a server based system. Um, and so it means we're collecting data proactively on Amazon and we're storing it. And just recently, again, this I have not made this public, but just recently I brought in a um, a machine learning and I'm trying to remember because I'm, I'm learning a lot of this as I go to uh, machine learning and forecasting analytics team to come in and just really pound through the terabytes of information to create and kind of help us to see what we can uh, do. So I'm, I don't know if that's going to pay off, but I'm all excited, you know, because it's like, oh, what are we going to learn? And maybe it's something I can do to the program uh, to make it better. And they think that there's a lot of ways that we can uh, open up some more stuff, we'll say. But what's really cool is it's also going to give me a lot of information that I can post on Kindlepreneur, uh, you know, and just tell people, look, this is what's happening. Here's some trends. Instead of guessing at how Amazon does this, I actually have terabytes of data that can forecast and project and say, this is actually what they're doing. This is why they did this. And I'm so needless to say, as, as a data nerd, I'm super excited about that. Um, but yeah, so we're working on that. Uh, we also, like, you, like you'd said too, it has been something that I've wanted to do for a very long time, which is to be able to report uh, Audible data. Um, Audible yeah. has been this like steel curtain. And I, I, I might be able to say that we're the first to have cracked the nut. I don't think anybody else has ever touched Audible. Um, I don't even think Not that the, I've seen of. Yeah, I don't think anyone, even the big ones that focus on fulfillment by Amazon, FBA, big products, like the mm -hmm. big names like Jungle Scout, I'm pretty sure they, they don't even touch that either. I don't think anybody has. We have been collecting data and analyzing and working with so many publishing companies to verify. Um, I think I've been working on that like for over a year. Uh, so I, I mean wow. it to say it was such a huge thing to finally get that taken care of and to feel strong enough to make uh, to put that out there. Now, granted, as always with software, we did run into a couple of bugs. Like, um, I did forget, uh, my team and I forgot to change up some of the parameters. So if you did an Audible book search, it was actually showing physical product instead of focus on Audible. So. Ooh. Yeah, I was like, oh, man, I totally forgot about that. Um, and that was on the suggested Amazon keywords, not on anything else. Um, okay. So we got that fixed. Uh, but, you know, that's the fun thing about software. So but I'm, I'm very excited about that. Yeah, I, I to say the least, I was pretty pumped about it and seeing that because for the longest time, we just had to kind of rely on going into auto suggest say through audible and figuring okay is this good we'd look at the search results maybe it's good maybe it's not um how is it and i'm sure you're probably going to get real scientific with me how were you guys able to engineer something that could decipher a lot of that you know whether it was ranking or keywords or things like that combination of that big data um yeah the algorithms that my team created to help create it and then working you know, having a strong relationship with a bunch of publishing companies to help us validate and verify. And then real, you know, it was like this combination of going back and forth. So we had to collect enough information, like a lot. And then we had to build something to help us crawl through it and figure it out. Then after that, it was go to the publishing companies, verify, test, be able to kind of tack in and, and see, yep, okay, that, that happened at the right moment. And then sending it back. And so, I mean, it was just, it was a wild, wild ride. Um, but I'm really jazzed that we got that done because it's helping to open up some more. Um, but yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm really excited about what that can do. And finally, too, you can also see the kind of money that's being made with audiobooks. Um, mm. And that's going to be big because most people were speculating. And truth be told, with the Audible Gate thing, I don't know if we open up a Pandora's box on that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but as as someone who absolutely loves listening to audiobooks, um, I'm just, I don't know, I'm kind of jazzed about it. <laughs> what do authors do with these keywords anyways? Where is this going to go? Is this strictly for, 
using it in the title, subtitle? Is it used in the description? Are we using it as back-end keywords? Where do we find that? So on and so forth. Yeah, truth be told is I haven't really tapped into um, like the internal metadata mar marketing of Audible. My first goal was to make sure that we could reveal the success of audiobooks, um, you know, and help to kind of pull back the curtain and see, hey, you know, like, for example, one of the things I think is going to be really important for authors is when authors are trying to figure out if they should make an Audible version or not, instead of... <sighs> you know, thinking, okay, I'm going to do it and maybe that will help my book get over the hump. You can go actually look at the Audible book sales of books in your general area. And now you'll be like, whoa, these ones that are, that look like they're doing better than mine aren't selling any of their Audible version. And that can help you to be like, whoa, pump the brakes and not spend more money on something that's not going to get you there. I, I, you know, or vice versa. You're on the, on the fence and you see, man, these books, you know, they're, they're, they're making way more with their Audible than they were with their ebook. Boy, I'm totally losing out. So that was the first thing that I really want to tackle was kind of um, unveiling, shall we say, some of the success rates and help authors to make that decision on whether or not they go one direction or not. That being said, with regards to the keywords for um, the audiobooks, I I think it can help. I, well, first off, you can't really change your title subtitle. OK, uh, yeah. because, you know, it's connected to the physical book and most people are not yeah. just making an audio book and no physical book. Um, that being said, too, is, is that I think most people are finding uh, audio books from Amazon.com searching. Then when they see an audio book, they will go to Audible to go check it out. That's sort of what we're getting from our data. I don't have enough yet to make that clear. Um, but the other thing too, is the categories. Uh, we do have the audible categories all in publish rocket as well. And so you can nice. change out your categories specifically. And there is a special process for that. It's not the same as a book. So that's another way to kind of help with your audible. Awesome. Uh, let's transition over to your other tool. Another baby of yours, <laughs> if you will. Uh, that's Atticus. Atticus, boy, you were telling me about this back when it had a different name. You know, you and I sat down and chatted. Uh, <laughs> share a little bit about Atticus, the whole process of you putting this together and where we're at today and where you're going to be going in the future with it. Yeah, well, I mean, the idea of Atticus uh, started probably back in like 2007. And um, this was because when I started writing, as a matter of fact, the first real writing I did was for my master's thesis. I was working for Apple and I got this new brand new software called Scrivener. And, um, you know, it it helped. It, it was much better than writing my thesis on a Word document. Uh, I don't think Google Docs was out at that time. Boy, am I dating myself. Um, <laughs> and so I, I used it. I thought it was great, but there was a lot of things I struggled with. Now, I used it for, I don't know, 14, 15 years or something like that. And I even paid $200 once for a course to learn how to really use it. But I was yeah. constantly forgetting where things were. I don't really get much out of the course. And, you know, go f go figure. I'd pay 200 bucks for a course on a $50 software. So I knew there was that problem. <laughs> and then when I really got into, um, into writing books, I was using it to write the book because, it's, okay, at least I can break up my chapters and kind of move them around and I can put in some research. But then I was playing around with a different set of software to help format. You know, Scrivener has the ability to format your book, but oh, it's not really good. <laughs> I mean, that's probably a very yeah. fair statement. Um, it's a lot of guessing. Uh, there's even a course on how to format a book with, uh, with Scrivener. And so that wasn't the right answer for me. There were free ways of doing it, but I was writing in nonfiction and there was, the, you know, there was a, <laughs> there were a lot of things I couldn't do with a freeway. Um, I, you know, and at the time I never, Vellum wasn't out at the time. Uh, so I used a lot of Judo and Judo was, I mean, it was, it was decent. Um, it was a lot harder to do. There was a lot of things you could do, but it worked. And then I, I ended up shifting over to paying somebody to do, to format my book. Um, it was just in the end, that was better. Well, I kept running into the problem though. Uh, one time I submitted the wrong final, final, this is the final copy, uh, you know, as yeah. we title them. And I yeah. paid hundreds of dollars for the guy to format the wrong book. And then luckily he was oh. really cool because I'd been a repeat customer. And so I only had to pay a couple hundred dollars for him to fix it. Um, because, you know, it was, it was intensive and I get that. 
so that was a costly mistake. And then on top of that too, just recently, I really needed to update uh, one of the books. And, you know, great, now I'm gonna get nickel and dime to go back and forth. My point of laying all that out is that I have always struggled in the fact that I've never had one software where I could write, collaborate, and format. And so my absolute goal was to make it that there was one day a software where authors could do those things and never have to leave it. They wouldn't have to buy and learn three, four, five different sets of software in order to write their book. <laughs> and this brought together the question of what exactly is a book writing software? Uh, many people say Scrivener's a book writing software. That's kind of true. You can write. You can't really collaborate, so you can't work with your editor, but you can format, so I think it's the closest. But like, for example, Vellum is just formatting. So our idea, our goal, is to make the one software where you can do all those things. But to do this, though, we decided that we'd start with formatting first. Um, you know, Vellum has done an amazing job creating a very intuitive, you know, easy software to allow you to format a beautiful book. But the problem with is, is that there's a lot of things they don't do. There's a lot of things they wouldn't do for us nonfiction writers. There was a lot of um, features that, um, you know, that they said they weren't going to do to implement. And on top of that too, they only work for Mac. So all the PC users were, you know, they didn't have another option. Um, yeah. If they wanted that kind of thing where they could see what their book looks like. So my team got together and we really started focusing. Now, the cool part about this is because we had the dream of the three components, right? The write, the collaborate, and format. We built Atticus with this in mind. So it's kind of like we built the engine first and then we started building the car around it. And so we released Atticus where it is uh, basically, think of it like uh, the capabilities of Vellum and pretty soon we will have hit all of the abilities that they have, but we also have new features that they don't have. We've made it cheaper uh, than Vellum as well. But you can also write inside of Atticus and we're starting work on the collaboration. So to recap all that, and I know that was long-winded, but uh, <laughs> when people ask me what Atticus is, I like to say, well, if Scrivener, Google Docs, and Vellum got together and had a baby, it would be called Atticus. That's a good way to put it, too. And I, I love the fact that you are actively working on integrations. One of them I saw you guys had integrated with BookBrush. So yeah, that's that was really awesome seeing something like that. Yeah, that's one of the fun things about being in the industry and knowing a lot. So like we we created this ability for people to make a full bleed image chapter themes, two pages, right? So you could take this yeah. really awesome scene. Maybe you have a great designer, maybe that when they were building your, your book cover, they made another scene of the spaceships. You could put that into your book and it looks amazing. The problem is, is a couple things. Number one, um, in order to take one image and split it into two pages, you have to calculate the trim size that you're gonna choose, get the ratios right, and then cut it right down the middle and then take those two images and put them there and that sucks. So I went to the guys at Book Brush. I said, hey, I got an idea. Why don't we collaborate? I'll send you over all the information you need to know and can you build me something when when people go there, they just drop the image, select the trim size and it whoosh, creates the two images just oh. like that. I was like, and the guy goes, actually we were thinking about doing something like that already because they were working on a plus content where you could mm -hmm. split it and he's like we're already in the middle of that and i was like great and so they did and so now it's super easy to be able to create that same thing goes with um ornamental breaks so we designed the ability for anybody to upload an image to make custom ornamental breaks so say for example it's your logo or maybe it's um you know if you're writing a romance and you want all these hearts and a chain or maybe it's a set of wreaths you know because it's a christmas book or something like that you can yeah. upload the image and use it well what about dimensions and how do you put this in well no problem you just click the button over to book brush and it's almost like a canva in that respect drop the image and it will absolutely work um to upload right into atticus so it was really cool to do that we're also working yeah. with pro writing aid their programmers are hopefully going to get back to me this week. They had to make nice. some changes on their end so as to make sure it will work seamlessly with Atticus. So I'm very excited about that. 
Uh, we have some things in the works with draft to digital as well um, to nice. integrate uh, with them on a couple of components to make it easier. Yeah. And yeah, there's that's the key. Um, talking to Plotter as well. Uh, I would love for people who love Plotter as their plotting uh, service to be able to export their work in Plotter and upload it right into Atticus. And Atticus knows where to put the information to make it most useful for you while you write. Um, that's one of the big things. I think it's important. Uh, we're working with For the Words. Yeah, there's a whole list. Big special thanks to Dave for taking a little bit of time out his day to spend some time with us to drop a little bit of the 411. And if you want more details about Dave and what he's doing, go on over to kindlepreneur.com and also pick up access to my preferred tool in self-publishing of Publisher Rocket when you visit dalelinks.com slash rocket. You can also take a look at Atticus over at atticus.io. I've been dabbling with it, but I'm still not 100% on there. But at any rate, thank you so much for tuning in. And until next week, this has been Self-Publishing with Dale, and I'll catch you then.